as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge. Of the Yukon. Hit the trail, fellas and girls. Yes, it's like hitting the trail with Sergeant Preston and King with the sensational new cutout models for building the famous Yukon Trail. They're offered at no extra cost right now by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the swell-tasting cereal shot from guns. Stand by for details in a few minutes. Jane Carson and his companion were interested listeners as old Joe Finley talked happily to a group of men in the cafe at Indian Creek. Yes, sir, luck's finally come my way. Look at that poke of gold, and there's plenty more where that comes from. You <laughs> sure are in the dough, Joe. Where did you dig it out, Finley? Now, I'm not saying. Not right now, anyhow. I'm heading for shelter. some business to attend to there. I'll do a little celebrating before I go back to McLean. Name me poison, boys. Hey, Joe. Look at all the gold that old coop is, will you? Yeah. We sure could use some of it, Jane. Well, I got to be moving along, fellas. I hear Sergeant Preston's in town for a few days. I want to see him. Yeah, Sergeant Preston's using the Lewis cabin while he's in Indian Creek. Up at the edge of town. Uh, I know where it is. See y'all when I come through here on the way back. So long. and get the dog team. Then we'll head out the trail to Selkirk a ways. You and I are going to lay in wait for old Finley and get that book of gold he's carrying. Hey, come on, let's get a move on. Right. Joe Finley went directly to the cabin where Sergeant Preston was staying and knocked on the door. Hi there, Sergeant. Heard you were here in town. Well, Joe Finley, come in, Joe. <laughs> well, by thunder, King always remembers his friends, don't he? How you doing, fella? Sit down, Joe, and tell me about yourself. Yeah, thank you, Sergeant. Didn't you go south of here somewhere to work a claim? Yeah, sure did, Sergeant. What's more, I made a strike, and a good one at that. Oh, that's fine. Uh, what makes me feel so good about it is that now I can help that young nephew of mine, Larry Finley, and his wife over in Selkirk. I hear they've been having sort of a hard time of it the last year. Yes, I know. Larry's claim gave out and things have been rough for them. Well, that's all over. Yes, sir. I'm heading for Selkirk as soon as I leave here. Got plenty of gold with me. I'll be going back there day after tomorrow. If you're still there, I'll see you again. I'll be there, I reckon. I have to register my claim before somebody finds out where it is. You haven't mentioned its location to anyone, have you? <laughs> no, Sergeant. Old sourdoughs like myself are too cagey for that. <laughs> Got something here I won't leave in your care, Sergeant. Here. Oh. A map showing where your claim is. Well, now, why do you want to leave this with me? Well, I've been around the Yukon long enough to know that anything can happen. 
got no reason to think anything will, but when I heard you was here, I figured I'd be on the safe side and let you hold on to that. Well, it's all right with me, but I don't see why. Sergeant, if anything should happen to me before I get that claim registered, I want you to give that map to my nephew, Larry, so as he'll have the claim. Well, all right, Joe. I'll keep it until I see you in Soundcake. Doesn't make you feel any better. Well, thanks, Sergeant. <laughs> well, I reckon I'll be getting along. Hit the trail for Selkirk before a blizzard comes along. Well, it isn't too far, Joe. I think you'll make it all right. I'll see you in a few days. I'd wait over and go back with you, but I'm kind of anxious to see Larry and Flora and tell them the good news. Well, goodbye, King. So long, Joe. Bye, and thanks for keeping that map for me. Bye. Hush! Hush, you hostess! Joe Findlay moved along the frozen, windswept trail at a good pace for almost two hours. Finally, he reached a point where the trail followed the top of a ridge, the sides of which fell away into snow-filled ravines. Ahead, Joe saw two men standing beside a dog team, which was drawn up on one side of the trail. As he approached, he stopped his dog team. Hells! Where are you, Husky? <laughs> Howdy! You run into some trouble? No, oh, but you are friendly. What? Gun says you're going to hand over that poke of gold you got with you. See, yeah, now put down that gun, mister. You ought to know that an old sourdough like me wouldn't have anything worth taking. Well, the old man's going to try to talk us out of it, King. He don't have a chance. Now, come on, you. Hand over that poke of gold like I said. We saw you showing it around in the cafe, so hand it over. I'm not going to do no such a thing. Give me that gold, do you hear? Hey, let go. I'll fix you. you this will fix out. you. Go. Yeah, imagine. Number fight. Search him, Dave. Right. Hey, here's the gold. Hey, good. Now let's get going and... What's the matter? Hey, he isn't breathing, Kane. His heart isn't beating either. He's dead. Dead? Yeah, are you sure? Guess he is at that. Holy mackerel, Kane, that's murder. What are we going to do? That Molly he went to see at Indian Creek might be coming back this way soon, and when he finds the body... Oh, what... stop shaking in your boots. We'll pitch him over the ravine into the deep snow. He won't be found until after the thaw comes. And then they'll think he just slipped off the trail. Yeah, but his dog team and sled. Well, take it with us and go on to Selkirk. You can drive it. We'll sell it to someone who won't ask questions. Now, come on. Help me toss him into the ravine. Snow fell during the next two days. Then Sergeant Preston came to Selkirk and stopped at Larry Finley's cabin near the outskirts of town. Come on, boy. Well, Sergeant Preston, come in out of the cold. Thanks, Larry. Come on in, King. Well, hello, Sergeant. It's good yeah. to see you and King again. I just came through from Indian Creek, Flora. I guess your Uncle Joe told you he saw me out there. Uncle Joe? Did you see him at Indian Creek? Yes, a few days ago. Oh, how is he? Well, uh, didn't he come here? He left for Selkirk two days before I did. He was coming to see you. We haven't seen him. Oh, Larry. Do you suppose something happened to him on the way? Well, I came over the same trail. I didn't see anything of him or of his dog team. I know he left Indian Creek and headed this way. I suppose he could have arrived in Selkirk, but I can't understand why he didn't come straight here. He usually does. That was his intention. I'll go uptown and inquire about him. Mind if I come along, Sergeant? No, Larry, of course not. Come on. I'll get your parka, Larry. Why was Uncle Joe coming to Selkirk at this time, Sergeant? Business he had to attend to. I'll let him tell you about it and he sees you. Here's your parka, Larry. Ah, oh, thanks, honey. I, uh, I won't be gone long. Let's go, Sergeant. All right. Come on, King. Going uptown, Sergeant Preston and Larry decided to separate and try to get news of old Joe Finley. While Larry went to inquire at the hotel and the few boarding houses in Selkirk, Sergeant Preston, after agreeing to meet Larry at the constable's office later, went with King to the Nugget Cafe. Wait here, King. I won't be long, boy. <laughs> Approaching the barkeep, Sergeant Preston asked. Hello, Frank. Hi, Sergeant. 
See anything of an old sourdough named Joe Findlay in the past two days? Uh, nope, I haven't. If I recollect right, he's short and stocky. Gray beard and side whiskers, is that right? Yes, that description uh, fits, Joe. He left Indian Creek a few days ago, but he doesn't seem to have arrived here in town. Joe, uh, so maybe he had an accident on the trail. Well, I came over the trail a couple of days after he left. Didn't see any sign of him. That's funny, all right. See, there's a couple of fellas come in from Indian Creek two days ago. Oh. They, they might have seen Joe on the way. Who are they? Where can I find them? Well, I don't know who they are, but they're, they're sitting back there at the table near the back door. That uh, tall fella, heavy second. Oh, thanks, Frank. I'll go ask them about Joe. As Sergeant Preston approached the table where Kane, Carson, and Gill were sitting, he couldn't help but notice that Gill, with a startled look, half arose from his chair as if to leave hurriedly. Hello. Uh, you men mind answering a few questions? Questions? Questions about what? We haven't done... Shut up, Gill, and relax. Sure. Sure. What's on your mind, Sergeant? Well, I understand you came through from Indian Creek day before yesterday. Well, what if we did? Well, I wondered if you saw anything of an old sourdough by the name of Finley, who was supposed to come over that trail the same time you did. I know. No, we didn't see anything of him. Did we, Kane? That's right, we didn't. In fact, until you mentioned him, we never even heard of Joe Finley. Oh? Uh -huh. You never even heard of Joe Finley, you say? Gil's right, we never did. Anything else you want to know, Sergeant? No. No, I guess not. Thanks for answering my questions. Glad to oblige, Sergeant. Did you find out anything, Sergeant? Nothing definite, Frank. By the way, uh, what do you know about those two men? Well, nothing much, except they've got plenty of gold, seems like. Oh? I reckon they struck it rich someplace and come here to celebrate. I see. Oh, thanks. Be seeing you, Frank. That's all. Come along, King. We'll go meet Larry at the constable's office. Later, Sergeant Preston was talking to Larry and the constable. Suppose you didn't find out anything, Larry. That's right, I didn't, Sergeant. If old Joe had come to town, I'd have known it. I do know two strangers arrived from Indian Creek the day you say Joe was due here. I know about them, Dave. I've talked to them. I wonder why Uncle Joe hasn't shown up. Larry, I hate to say this, but in my opinion, he never will show up. Uh, never will show up? Why do you say that? Because I have reason to believe that your Uncle Joe Finley is dead. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. While talking to Larry Finley and the constable, Sergeant Preston stated that he didn't think Larry's uncle would arrive, saying that he had reason to believe Joe was dead. Both Larry and the constable were startled by Sergeant Preston's words. The constable spoke first after a moment of tense silence. Sergeant, what makes you think that Joe Finley might be dead? If something had happened along the trail, either you or those two strangers would have found the old man. I know. Then why did you say Just that? Just a minute, Larry. Let me explain. I found out that the two strangers at the cafe had plenty of gold. They came over that trail and arrived in Selkirk the day Joe was due in. That's right. I saw them spending plenty yesterday. But didn't those men tell you they knew nothing about the old man? Yes, Dave, they did. But one of them made a slip. It was a nervous one of the two. Slip? What do you mean? I asked them if they'd seen anything of an old sourdough named Finley as they came along the trail. One of them said they hadn't. The other agreed. Well? Then the stocky, nervous one added, until you mentioned him, we never even heard of Joe Finley. That I hadn't mentioned that your uncle's first name was Joe. You think they were lying? I certainly do. It sure would seem that way to me, too. Joe told me he was carrying a large amount of gold with him. I understand he was flashing it around the cafe at Indian Creek before he left. Then you think perhaps the two strangers might have followed Joe and held him up? Yes. As it snowed heavily after Joe left Indian Creek, it'd be useless to try to find his trail. Then 
There'd be no way of proving they held Uncle Joe up or harm him, Sergeant. Now that your uncle's disappeared, Larry, it'd be hard to prove anything. I have a plan that might show us if the strangers had anything to do with Joe's disappearance. It might help us locate him. What is your plan, Sergeant? Joe gave me a map showing the location of his claim, which so far hasn't been registered. He said if anything should happen to him before he got to the registry office, I was to give the map to Larry so he could register the claim. He said the claim's a very rich one. Do you believe he had reason to think he'd be held up? No, Larry, I don't. Joe's the cautious type, that's all. How does the uh, map enter into your plan, Sergeant? Now, listen closely. Larry, this is what I want you to do. Go to the... Larry and the constable listened attentively as Sergeant Preston talked. Later, Larry left the constable's office and went to the Nugget Cafe. He noticed that Kane, Carson, and Gill were still there. So he stood with a group near their table and spoke so that they could hear what he said. It sure is funny. My Uncle Joe Finley didn't arrive in Selkirk the past day or two. I guess if he had come to town, one of you men would have seen him around. Yeah, we all know old Joe. Well, are you expecting him, Larry? Yeah. Who said he was supposed to come? Sergeant Preston said so. Huh? What's more, the sergeant said Uncle Joe had a map showing the location of a mine where he'd made a strike. Oh, no, you're gone. He intended to register his claim when he got here. So old Joe made a strike, huh? I reckon you'd be in on his good luck, huh, Larry? I suppose so, only I... I can't figure out why he didn't get here. Well, I'll wait a day or so more, then start a search for him along the trail. I have to be getting along home now, as... Any of you see Uncle Joe, let me know. All right, Larry. Kane and Gill had listened attentively to Larry's words. After he left the cafe, Kane spoke in a low voice. Hey, Gill. Seems like we overlooked a good bet. You mean by not getting a map the old man carried? Yeah. That isn't too late, either. Hey, now, wait a minute. You are thinking of going out there to where we left the old man, are you? Sure. Got that map on him, and we might as well have yeah, but it. But if we showed up at the registry office here to register a claim on it with him missing it, all Don't be a fool. We'll wait a while. Then register the claim in a month or two. In the meantime, we can head for the mine and dig out some of the gold. Now, come on. All Let's right. get the dog team and head out to that ravine where we left the old man. After leaving the cafe, Larry had hidden alongside the building to watch. He saw Kane and Gill come out and hurry up the street toward their boarding house. Later, he was watching as they set out on the Indian Creek Trail with their dog team. Then, Larry went on the run to tell Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, those two men fell for your trap. I waited until I saw them leaving by the Indian Creek Trail. My dog team's ready. Following those two will lead to Joe Finley. I'll go with you, Sergeant. All right, Dave. King, what's the trouble? He's been limping, Sergeant. Must have got a paw on some sharp ice. Well, let's see, boy. You'll have to arrest that paw, fella. You'd better leave King, Sergeant, until we get back. Larry, I'll leave King in your care. Take him to your cabin until we get back, will you? All right, Sergeant. Stay with Larry King. Easy, boy. Let's get going, Dave. All right, Sergeant. <laughs> Sometime later, Sergeant Preston and the constable approached the place where the trail ran along the ridge. As they rounded a bend in the trail, Sergeant Preston saw a dog team stop. He spoke to the constable. Look up ahead, Dave. That must be their dog team. Yeah, but neither one of them are in sight. We'll soon find out where they are. Have your gun ready. Oh, you have stop here and walk the distance to their team. All right, Dave, come on. The two Mounties walked along the trail toward the crook's dog team, keeping a sharp lookout for Gill and Kane. As they neared the dog team, Preston stopped and pointed. Look. Down in the ravine, Dave. There they are. Yeah. They're kicking around in the snow looking for something. Yes, and I'm sure I know what they're hunting for. We'll move along the ridge till we're right above them. They haven't seen us. Come on. Moving cautiously, Preston and the constable made their way to the point just above the two men in the ravine. Then Sergeant Preston called out. Hell down there! You're covered! Raise your hands and stand where you are! Kane and Gill had looked up at Preston's first words, and then simultaneously they ducked behind some large snow-covered boulders. As they moved, Sergeant Preston fired. But both men below had reached cover safely, and an instant later a rifle shot rang out. Sunday, quick! That bullet was close. Yes. We don't dare show ourselves over the edge of the ridge, and they're well protected by the boulders. I'll peek over. Maybe I'll see one of them. Uh -uh. That won't do. Dave, you stay here and keep back. 
Every once in a while, I'll try to get a shot at them. What are you going to do? I'm going to creep along the ridge so they can't see me. When I get around the bend, I'll find a place to get into the ravine. You hold their attention up here, understand? All right, Sergeant. Good. Keep it up. On hands and knees, Sergeant Preston moved back along the trail until he had rounded the bend and was out of sight. Then, finding a place that wasn't too steep, he started to make his way down. Behind the boulders in the ravine, Kane Carson and Gill were intently watching the ridge above them. They're still up there, Gill. We can't get to our dog team. Uh, what are we going to do? We'll outweigh them, that's what. We have a lot more protection down here from that wind. They'll have to move on before long. Then we'll hike on out of here. You're not going to hey, hike wait. any place. Drop your guns, both of you. Gill, behind us, he's got to drop on us. Drop your guns, I said. Uh, we better do like he says. All right, mister. There's mine. As Gill dropped his gun, Kane suddenly grabbed him, and swinging Gill around as a shield, he faced toward Sergeant Preston. He won't get me. Let go. If he shoots, he'll hit me. Sergeant Preston stepped out from behind his protecting boulder as Gill had thrown down his gun, so that he was a perfect target for Kane's bullet. But while he couldn't fire without hitting the defenseless Gill, he saw Kane Carson aim his gun at him from behind his human shield, and Preston knew that before he could jump back behind the boulder, Kane's bullet would reach him. I'll kill that money now. Oh! Hey, that shot. It came from up on the ridge. Yes, your friend moved out from behind the boulders when he grabbed you and faced this way. We, we haven't done anything. You had no right trailing us and shooting at us. The way you've acted is enough to let me know you've been breaking the law. Dave! Dave, come on down here. Here I come, Sergeant. Now keep both of you covered until the constable gets down here. And you'll have a chance to explain your way out of this if you can. A short time later, the constable reached the group. Under Sergeant Preston's directions, he gave first aid to Kane's wounded shoulder. Oh, then Preston spoke. All right, Dave. Hold your gun on these two while I take a look around. With pleasure. Well, what are you looking for? There isn't anything down here, Sergeant. No. Suppose you and Kane came here to have a picnic, that it? I think I'll turn up something before long. We'll freeze waiting around like this. My shoulder hurts bad. Take us back to town if you're going to. You can talk to us there. You'd like to get us away from here, wouldn't you? What? Nothing here under the snow. Is it Finley's party, Sergeant? We don't know anything about it. Both the line, Dave. Only along. There, you see? You haven't a thing on us. Shut up! It's strange, Dave. I was certain we'd find what we expected here since we came to that spot. Now, like Kane said, you haven't anything on us. You had no right to jump Just us Just a minute. Dave, look up the ravine. It looks like a thin column of smoke. It is. We'll go investigate. I have an idea we'll get proof against these two after all. Come on. Get going, you two. All right. After walking a short distance up the ravine, Preston and the others came to an old cabin, practically covered by a deep snowdrift. Someone's here, all right. We'll go in. Joe Finley. Jill, you said he was dead. Joe, we thought you were dead. God damn me. They robbed me. Locked me out. Come to in the ravine. Made my way to this old cabin. Got a fire going, but couldn't last much longer. You'll be all right now, Joe. We'll get you back to Selkirk. Well, Dave, we have the proof we wanted against these two. We'll take them to jail for attempted murder. That evening, Sergeant Preston and the constable were at Larry Finley's cabin with Larry and Flora. Old Joe was recuperating in the back bedroom. In the living room, Preston was saying, Well, we found your uncle, Larry. Fortunately, we found him alive. It's a good thing he did live, too, so that he was able to identify those two men as the ones who tried to kill him. Poor Uncle Joe. To think he was almost murdered while he was coming here to see us. He must have had a premonition after all, Larry, when he gave me that map. You can see to it that his claim's filed in the morning. Uncle Joe said would have half, and it sure means a lot to us. But it wouldn't have meant much if he hadn't lived to enjoy the good fortune with us. Oh, that's the way I feel about it, too. We're so thankful that you got there to save his life, Sergeant. Well, frankly, if it hadn't been for Dave's quick eye and straight shooting, your uncle would have lost his life. I might have been killed, too. Anyway, we're thankful it didn't turn out that way, believe me. Sergeant, you know King was restless the whole time you were gone, weren't you, fella? <laughs> if King had been able to go along, they wouldn't have had the chance to get me in a spot like that. King's glad we're back, and I'm glad to say this case is closed. Yeah.
In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. They're yours for the asking. Yes, fellas and girls, the exciting new Yukon Trail cutoff models are yours for the asking when you ask for Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. There's no waiting, no box tops or coupons. No extra cost. Your grocer now has them. The 59 Yukon Trail models come on eight different new packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The swell taste in cereals shot from gun. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. For instance, on package number four, you get models of the Dead Dutchman Gold Mining Camp, including the mine interior, miner's shack, Company tent, loose box, plus a freight type dog sled and team, a fox, wolverine, and husky. On package number eight, the Yukon Queen River boat with a paddle that actually turns. On package number one, Sergeant Preston's own cabin and the White Horse Jail that Bat Nelson broke out of. Every package is clearly numbered on the front. You'll want the complete set of eight different new Yukon trail packages of Quaker puffed wheat. And Quaker puffed rice, the original crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Start building your complete Yukon Trail right away. They're at your grocer's now. Hurry. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Guardian for Jimmy. When the father of Jimmy Fox died of a heart attack, an old miner named Smokey Bates stepped in to look after the lad. Little did I know that when he let the boys sign a grub stake agreement, greedy men would set a dynamite trap for me. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. Yeah. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Yeah. Yeah. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. <laughs>